All right, our next segment here is tech tips. Now we did this at the former event that I'm not supposed to mention the name of anymore, I guess, uh, that was in June, 2021, we had a tech tips program. It was one of our most popular events. And part of that was because of the fabulous tutorials. But I think the real reason is that the fabulous Lois Margolin was the host of the event. And she did wonderful things like cut my mic when I ran too long. But Lois, please take it away. Let's try and get back on time. Thank you very much, David. I am never gonna live it down that we cut my David off in midstream, but we do make sure that we are staying on time. Each of our presenters, and they are incredible, I've already heard their speeches, have five minutes to wow us about the new technology. Welcome to EVVCon, Elevate the Value of Virtual. We're excited to be here today and we are going to get started immediately. So hold on to your hats and here we go. Our first speaker is Toastmaster Andy Colburn. He belongs to Toastmasters Without Borders. He's originally from the UK and currently resides in Luxembourg. Andy is a training manager for an international communication company, which supplies audio equipment for broadcasting live events. Slido is a tool for online interactive features. Andy started using Slido in 2021 in his professional work because he finds that it provides a lot of uh, different interactions from the audience. In other words, it's a structured communication tool. It took Andy, okay, you ready for this? 10 minutes to figure out how to use this software. Please help me welcome Andy presenting Slido, an audience interactive tool. Andy? Thank you, Lois. So yes, in my work, I give a lot of online training and it really has become online in the past two years or so for reasons I'm sure you can work out. Now, if you're giving a three to five minute little presentation just to talk is I'm sure absolutely fine. But if a session is going for two, three, four hours, then if it's just a straight monologue going at the audience, it's gonna get a bit dull, no matter how good a speaker you are. So if you can build some interactivity into that presentation, then it can really help keep the participants engaged and really build a connection with you as a speaker so that the audience actually takes more of your content from what you're bringing them. Now, chat is a good option in video programs such as Zoom or Teams or whatever. But sometimes if there's a question that comes early, it can get lost in the chat as things scroll up and people have communications going back and forth. So when we were looking to bring our training online, we really looked for a way that we could have a central point to gather all of the questions. And also because sometimes you're running a little bit out of time at the end and you can't cover every single question, we wanted to be able to make it somewhat democratic and give the most attention to the questions that were the most popular. So we came up with the tool called Slido. Now it's there is a freemium intro level, so you can start using it for free. And it's a really good way to collect Q&A during an online session like a webinar. For the audience, it's really easy to join in. All you have to do is scan a QR code that you can show up on your screen, or you can just put a link into the chat and then they would just open up the Slido session in their browser. And then whatever happens in the Slido, whether that's gathering questions or other interactivity, that's all happening in their browser in real time. So everyone is all synchronized and any questions that come up will be shown at the same moment. So if we look here at a little Q&A that I prepared earlier. We actually have three questions that have already been asked and they are just being shown in the order that they came in. If, however, someone was to upvote one of the questions, such as by clicking on the thumb, then that will straight away take it to the top of the line. And then as moderator, I can then highlight a question while I'm answering it. And then once it has been answered, then I can archive it so it goes away and we're left with the other questions that are left. So it's a really good way of gathering all the questions in for the audience, keeping them in one central place. You can actually gather questions in advance of the session so that people, if people know they want to ask something, they can already submit their questions before you start speaking. Now, there's also other ways to make it interactive. So you can, for example, create word clouds, which is where you're asking your audience to 
answer a specific question such as what is your favorite food and then it will present those answers in the browser with the most common answers being the ones with the largest text we can also do things like asking polls where you give people some options to choose from and then they can just pick the one that's most relevant for them they can vote in and then you'll see the different answers coming in and you can gauge the popularity of the different options there are other things you can do as well. Recently during a training session, we finished it off with a quiz to see how well the participants had taken on that knowledge. And so it was all happening in real time, live. The participants had maybe 20, 30 seconds to answer each question. And then at the end of each round, we had a leaderboard. So you could see who had the most questions. If people had the same number of questions right, then the time taken was a tiebreaker. So answering quickly was an advantage. And we played up the drama a bit by adding in things like the how, who wants to be a millionaire music to really try and get some of the tension up and get people feeling it more. But it's a really good way of getting people engaged. So it's not just a one way presentation that you're giving in webinars or instructionals really something that you can interact with and have back and forth with the audience whether that be questions polls brainstorming gathering ideas or quizzes it can really increase the interactivity and make it a lot more fun for the participants and also for the presenter as well thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you, Andy. And I just wanted to ask David, our timer is Larry Miller, is that correct? Actually, yes, I, was, no? I was trying to clarify that myself uh, in the in the chat. I, I think Diana. Diana. Is, not, is Di Diana, could you could you uh, speak up so that we see you on screen? Are you? I'm here. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Were Were you sharing uh, colors? It was a misunderstanding. I thought it was Larry, but I really starting sharing the colors now okay all right well it, it came out on, on time so let's uh let's move on with our show all right and i know that voice diana good to see you so first of all did you realize that what andy was really telling us is that slido is q a like a webinar on steroids between word clouds and polls that you can do on the fly and i love the fact that you can click on that like and it moves the questions up because somebody always asks the question that you ask, and then you're like, why aren't they answering that? If they would just answer that question, I would know the answers to the universe. So you can now move those questions up in the slide deck, and that just makes it so much more powerful. Let's give it up for Andy. Give him some hearts. Give him some love. Tell him that you really appreciate it. I'm looking for those hearts on your screen. Give them up. Let's see them. Let's see them. Let's see them. There they come. Thank you, Raquel and Marilyn and Elma and Jim. Okay, so now we're moving on to our presenter number two, distinguished Toastmaster Marcus Sapala. Marcus belongs to Basel International Speakers. So, you know, I did this little interview right before our presentation and we found out that Marcus loves roller coasters, stand-up comedy, and of course, OBS, which is what he's gonna be showing us. He has written, a, written 167 roller coasters in 38 theme parks in 13 countries. Wow. He finds that roller coasters provides him all kinds of material for his stand-up comedy. I'm going to have to watch that comedy. He started a live stream with YouTube videos, and he was using some different software and saw OBS and said, you know what? This thing is so powerful. I need to learn it and use it on my videos. So now he uses OBS Studio. OBS Studio is a free open source video recording, streaming, and mixing software. And I see people are already fans. Marcus is a YouTube mastermind behind hybrid events. Please help me welcome Marcus in his title speech, Marcus Presents. Marcus? You can share slides like this in your next video call. And you can quickly switch between your slides and you can switch between different layouts as well. Maybe you want to have your camera in there or completely remove the slides. What, what you're seeing here is the output from a software called OBS Studio and you can get it for free at obsproject.com. One of the best things about sharing slides like this is that when you put your slides to the side, 
you still remain full screen on the on the display, which means that you can still engage with your audience. But I think the more powerful reason to do this is that you can remove your slides. No one should ever have their slides on screen throughout their presentation. Only bring them in when you actually need them. That's the first tip here with OBS Studio. The second uh, technique that I want to show you is these kind of lower thirds. So if I'm if I have a call to action for somebody to go and visit this page that I have right here to find out where I, which gear I use, you can go to marcuspresents.com slash gear, and then I can easily remove it as well. So these kind of animated lower thirds are very easy to do in OBS Studio as well. Here's another example. This is a little animated one. When I'm live streaming on Amazon, I usually put this up. And this is actually a video. It's not just an animation. It's actually a little video file that comes up there. So. Uh, this is the second technique that I want to show you here with OBS Studio. And the third technique is going to be relevant for your hybrid meetings, and that is to use timer cards like this. We can cycle through our green, amber, and red and indicate to our speakers how much time they have left. And the reason why this is particularly valuable for hybrid meetings is that you should never monopolize the video feed from the room. So if I am the a timer in the room, I cannot use that entire video feed just for my timer cards. I also should allow the camera, which is pointing at the speaker, which is simulated by me here, to remain on screen. And by splitting your screen like this, you achieve that exactly. So OBS Studio is free and open source. You can get started with it with fairly little technical knowledge. You might be up and running within an hour. All the visuals that you've seen so far, they are all done completely without a green screen. And you can also get started with just a single monitor, for example. I'm using a single monitor set up right now. But you can do a lot of cool things with, with a green screen as well. So I'm going to turn around and lift up my green screen and show you a couple of things that you can do with that. Let's switch to my green screen scene here. And one thing you can do, of course, is just put a little nice background around behind you. But you could also put your slides behind you and um, move them around as you normally would. What else can you do? Well, you could, for example, put a video behind you. Here's a video of me doing a review of a microphone. Or you could put a a web page behind you. This is my YouTube channel. And you can see here that I can even during the, the presentation, I can scroll live on this web page. Uh, and you can see it's called Marcus Presents. And on this channel, I actually share a lot of tips about how to use OBS Studio. Here is the scheduled live stream for tomorrow where I'm going to talk about uh, some tips about how, how to become a TEDx speaker. I'm going to do a live practice of my next TEDx talk. And here's one about YouTube, for, uh, about uh, OBS, for example. So OBS Studio is super powerful. I'm going to stop that screen sharing right now and do a different screen share just super quickly, just so that you can see what OBS Studio actually looks like. It will look a bit intimidating, but do not worry. This is what the OBS Studio interface looks like. On the left hand side here, we have all the different scenes that I'm using, all the scenes that we've been talking about. We have the one with the green screen there as well. In the middle, I have all the different sources, and then we have some audio meters here. It's a super powerful tool uh, that uh, I definitely recommend you check out. I'm going to stop that screen sharing there as well. And as you can see, the output from the OBS virtual camera appears just in my own little zoom frame. So I can go full screen if I want, but I don't have to. If you want to learn more, check out my YouTube channel. Go to marcuspresents.com and find the link there. Thank you very much for today. Alrighty, Marcus, wasn't that awesome? So I have to tell you in my earlier scenario with him, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to learn how to do this. So I've already downloaded OBS and I'm getting ready to work with it. But I have to tell you, Marcus has a bunch of free videos on YouTube, which is what I was using. He also has some special packages. If you want a little more special training and what he's not going to tell you, he'll even do some one-on-one -on -one training. So thank you, Marcus. Please visit Marcus Presents. And David, if you can put that in the chat again, that would be awesome. And if you have special questions, maybe you can private chat Marcus and he might have some time to actually answer you. Look at him, he's so nice. Everybody, let's give him some hearts, give him some love, some claps, let him know that we appreciate him. 
Thank you, Marcus, for taking time out. And the biggest tip I learned in all this, OBS does not require a green screen, which I always thought it did. So that was my biggest thing that is pushing me back to look at this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Our third and final presenter, so excited to recognize distinguished Toastmaster Pamela Benjamin, who is from, get this, online presenters, witty birds, and digital communicators. Pamela has been competing, and I love watching her on my, my phone as she does it in her Ironman competitions. She is still actively training for this. She's a tutor, and she is starting a competitive triathlete training program for people like us, the everyday person to become more fit. Pamela started a fitness channel on YouTube with fitness motivation and training, and she is developing that online presence. Today, Pamela is presenting a program called Notion, a simple productivity tool database for collaboration. Please help me welcome Distinguished Toastmaster Pamela Benjamin. Thank you, Lois. As you can tell, I have a lot of different projects going on at one time. One of the projects that I was working on in January was as a VP of PR for, and for Digital Communicators and Online Club. And as VPR, VPPR, I had a lot of different files that I was coordinating with different people. And it became overwhelming to keep track of all the iterations of videos and all of the different JPEG or picture files. As I was moving through that, I discovered Notion. Notion is a very simple tool. Someone asked me, is it like other productivity tools? It's similar on the first step to other lists that you might create different files, but it has the ability to be a database. So the point of that is once you take little baby steps in it, it can become bigger and bigger. With Notion, I started to organize some of the digital files that I was using. And then I started organizing my own digital files for my fitness business and my tutoring business. I'm going to show you Notion. What Notion is, this is the pricing for Notion. I've been using the free account for several months here, and I think it's incredibly robust. You can get the professional pro for $4, the team, and then there's the enterprise. Right now, I'm using the free, and I'm able to share digital assets on Notion, which is really what I was looking for. Here is, this is what I was looking for, being able to share those assets. Now, let me show you my database in Notion. This is my fitness one. Now, in techno land, this is a workspace. It has all my information. To me, it looks like Pinterest, a lot of different pictures of things. Now, if I click on one of those items, what I'm going to see is information. Information that I'm staring using for a different time. Now, this is an article that I found on stability and strength for runners. Runners use certain muscles over and over again, their quadriceps and their hamstrings. And so it goes through a list of all of these different flexes. And I really like that because I'm going to do some videos on runners stretches. This one here is nutrition tracking. It goes to a, a spreadsheet. Here is another one, a workout spreadsheet, and this is a list of a lot of different tools I use. Now, this is, this is something that I use with one of my clients, the spreadsheet, and it's very robust. And I'm able to, this. I put the links right in here, but this is a list of the warm-up activities I do and all of the different activities grouped by muscle, muscle parts. Now in the, in the actual spreadsheet, I would have it, it's much more complex. It's got days, times, et cetera. But this gives me a really high level perspective. Now, how could you use it? You could use it something like I did. Now here is, I was going to my, 
my triathlon, my Ironman in April. And I wanted to do some filming before and after the race. So the race was Sunday and I wanted to film on the beach. So I did that. And before I went to down to Galveston, I was scoping out different areas where I could do the filming. And this is what I was imagining doing this, the planks, lunges, and, and then what it would look like, what would be best. And so it really helped me kind of bring those all together. Now, I also use it for podcasting and ideas, my why, along with a list of different ideas. It's very robust. You can put tables in there and a lot of different information. So I would like to encourage you to try it for a, for a productivity tool and see how easy it is to create and set up those different templates. Thank you. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you, Pamela. So Notion looks super easy. I was blown away with the visual aspect of it, which I thought was really interesting because when we were in that presentation, one of the other presenters said they really liked the list piece. So it provides you the opportunity to see it in both ways. And Pamela, you did a fabulous job showing us how this can really help us down the road. If you would like to connect with Pamela, she said that she can be found on Facebook at PB, Pamela Benjamin, Communication. So please make sure you connect up with her. That is our tech tips of the day. I have enjoyed it. David, do we have maybe five minutes to ask and answer questions? We can still yeah, make up six. We could do that. All you're right. The, you're the person some... who's in a hurry, but <laughs> yes, go ahead. All right. Do we have any questions? Andy Byrne, let's see. How are you doing, Andy? What can we do for you? You're muted. Hold on. We're going to get Dr. Kim to unmute you. Okay. Uh, in terms of comparing OBS versus other programs like Ecamm versus some other programs that do a number of things similar to OBS, but maybe not as complex. Do you have any thoughts about that? Or if you just taken one program and said, I'm going to learn everything I can about this program and make it work for me. Marcus? I am only using uh, OBS Studio. There's another program that somebody mentioned that uh, was previously called Streamlabs OBS or Streamlabs Desktop. It is a little bit easier to use. The company behind it is maybe not the company that you want to associate with. Um, Ecamm, I haven't tried. I understand Ecamm is only for Mac and, and I use Windows. Uh, it actually doesn't matter so much which kind of software you're using, so long as you can bring something that is a little bit more um, interesting than just the Zoom features, you will already Im impress 90% of the people. Awesome, thank you, Marcus. Any other questions? I have Andy. Andy, what can we do for you? Um, Hello, uh, I had a question for Pamela actually. It was, I found very interesting the, your presentation on Notion and I'm considering to switch from uh, Evernote to Notion, but uh, I really can't understand what is the difference and why Notion could be better. I've used Notion just, I've used Evernote just a little bit. I know there's a price tag to it. So the, the part with Notion, it's free. So if you're considering moving it over, what I would do is take a lot of your Evernote information, put it into Notion and see what's better. I think free is better, depends what you're using it for, but there are so many templates you can also use. I didn't mention that in, the, in my five minutes, but there's so many templates you can purchase. And I've just started to learn all the variety and there's people who use it for so many different things, whether engineers or fitness people or graphic designers. So I really like it for keeping track of digital assets and scripts, et cetera, but it's just a very open system and very easy to use. So I like that versus Evernotes. I think it's a little bit more closed, but I would try it for yourself. Thank you very much. Kind of question. Thank you, pa uh, Pamela. Andy, also one of the things I noticed is that Notion has more visible properties to it. So I think it's a stronger visual program. 
And I did hear someone else say that they had a question. There you are, Christine. What can we do for you? Yes, thank you so much. On OBS, I, I was looking at the tabs at the top when you were showing us a display uh, of the actual, what it actually looks like. Does it have its own streaming capabilities or do you attach or do you have a favorite streaming that you use with that? So OBS at its core is a live streaming platform. That is what most people know it for. That is what almost everybody on Twitch, for example, uses, well, either that or Streamlabs. So it does have built-in streaming to YouTube, to, to Twitch, to Facebook, uh, or any custom destination as well. I also use it for Amazon live streams. Then it also has a recording function. And then this virtual camera function that I've been demoing today, that's a little bit of an afterthought. That's It has been added lately, but streaming is really the core capability of OBS Studio. Okay, just one more question. So if there is, um, do you, it, does it stream on multiple um, social media platforms at one time? It does not do that natively, but you can use services like Restream.io to, to accomplish that. Some of the web-based live streaming platforms like StreamYard and Melon, they have built-in multi-platform support, but OBS Studio does not at the moment. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Christine. And that pretty much wraps us up. I did notice Abby had a question, Pamela. Maybe you can mention that on the side. But what we want to do is just remind you, we heard from the amazing Andy about Slido. Marcus Presents was OBS Project. And of course, Pamela wowed us with Notion. So all three of our presenters were amazing. Can we throw some hearts up there for them? Give them some love. Let them know how much we appreciate them for taking time out and showing us a little piece of their world. There you go. Presenters, this is all for you. Thank you very much for allowing us to provide you some tech tips. And I am handing it back to Mr. Dave or distinguished Toastmaster, David Carr. <laughs>